you ever felt like you didn't fit in? It's like a bad dream. You show up at a party and everybody's laughing at the same joke, but you don't know the punchline and you don't know why. Well, I felt like that for much of my life. You see, my family is from, is three, from three generations from all over the place. My Argentine mother was born in Buenos Aires. My American father was born in Manila. They were both living as expatriates in Brazil when they met, so I was born in Rio. For kindergarten, my father was in Santa Barbara, sandwiched in between stints in Shanghai and South Africa. I was in Bogota, Colombia. My own children were born in Beijing and attended kindergarten in Jakarta, Indonesia. My first language was Portuguese. My second was Spanish. I didn't learn English until I was seven. I attended six different schools between fifth and tenth grade. In middle school, when all the other kids were talking about their favorite old TV shows, I couldn't join in the conversation. I have no American TV memory before I was seven. Even now, I still don a yellow jersey every four years and I cheer for Brazil to win the World Cup. But I really don't know all the cheers in Portuguese and I certainly don't know all of the superstitions I'm supposed to avoid in order not to jinx the game. My Argentine aunt in Brazil still calls me that American cousin. Now, this might sound like an exotic childhood, but really, it was just normal life lived in lots of different places. You know, a highly mobile global life, a constant state of cross-cultural confusion. So you might know the term TCK, or third culture kid, to mean a, a child who has grown up not in their home or their passport country, but also not fully part of the host country that they might be living in. They live in between in this third culture. Recently, researchers have expanded the term to talk about children who are interacting meaningfully with cultures throughout their childhood. So the broader term is now cross-cultural kids. So throughout this talk, whenever you hear me say CCK, imagine the qualities of a TCK. So even in adulthood, CCKs can suffer from rootlessness, loneliness, depression, they feel misunderstood, being asked the question, where are you from, can cause a rising sense of panic. Now, I see students in my office struggling with their latest transition. They're disconnected, disengaged. They're really tired of having to make new friends and learn the curriculum at a new school. And I see their parents in my office, too, grappling with the guilt of ripping their students out of their latest comfort zone watching their previously bubbly child get angry, get low grades, get disconnected and disengaged. And I empathize with them, I recognize, and still I choose to raise my children in this same way. Because I believe that if a CCK understands the challenges of these upbringings, they can also recognize the positive elements that come with it. International mindedness, resilience, adaptability, an ability to try new things, the opportunity to speak many languages. My own kids have been flying across the Pacific since they were six weeks old. They know their 747s from their A380s. They can sing happy birthday in Bahasa, count to 10 in Mandarin, and ask a new friend to play on any playground around the world. So this is why I believe in the power of CCK positivity. Because really, we need to be looking at the cross-cultural connections that can come. So let me tell you a story about college. When I had to fill out my college applications, my father and I had no idea about this TCK or CCK terminology. The most confusing question for me on my college application was the race and ethnicity check boxes. I had a white option, and then I had a non-white Latina option, which I really had, did not know what to do with. So instead, I checked the other box, and I wrote in white Latina. 
So when I arrived at campus, I was invited to join the Latino Latina Students Association. But I realized when I went to that meeting that I actually wasn't really Latina enough for the others. And so I went chameleon. I melded into the predominantly white New England culture around me. So on, on April 4th of my sophomore year, I looked out the window and it was sunny. So I put on a t-shirt and shorts. I really wanted to cheer on my friend Sarah in her women's lacrosse game. So I went down to the field. I had no idea what was going on. Didn't know the rules, had no understanding of what the whistles meant, didn't know who was winning. And then half an hour later, it started to snow. So I was completely out of place in the stands, in the game, in the weather. Luckily, my friend Sarah is still a close friend of mine, as is my other friend Sharon, a close friend of mine from college who played squash, which I didn't even try to watch. But Sharon recently told me that she had never known my history because I'd never told her my story. I'd never shared that with her. The most exotic element of my college classmates when they looked at me was that I was an ice hockey player from Miami, Florida. They didn't know I was a CCK. So 25 years later, I went to my college reunion. And there I reconnected with classmates. And I saw some of the opportunities I had missed. And we shared stories, some of us for the first time, of our childhood. So I realized actually a classmate of mine had gone to kindergarten here where my kids go to school. And my friend Paul had grown up like my sons, the son of international school teachers, and he had lived all around the world, including in the Middle East. And I caught up with my freshman and sophomore year roommate, Kristen, who was also an ice hockey co-captain. Now, she had grown up part of her time in Peru and Venezuela and had already raised her three sons in Japan, England, and Singapore. And we shared stories of mothers raising our children overseas. And we hadn't shared our stories back then. We could have built bridges across the cultures present on campus. We could have confidently gone out into the world and made humanity better. But we hid in our adolescence. And we tried to blend in, never knowing that we came from the same tribe. Now there's another tribe you might be familiar with that shares many similar qualities to CCKs, and they're called the X-Men. Now, as you know, similar to CCKs, the X-Men can skew positively or they can skew negatively. Like us, their mutations come to light in adolescence. Fortunately for them, they have a fellow mutant named Professor Xavier who creates a school that helps them be a force of good in the world. And you might be familiar with another real life X-Man, former President Barack Obama. Now his mom was a white American from Kansas, his father a black African from Kenya. He was born in Hawaii. When his mother remarried to an Indonesian, he came to Jakarta, Indonesia, where he went to local elementary school. And when he became president, <laughs> He tried to help the underrepresented groups of America. And everywhere he traveled, he was warmly welcomed by crowds of thousands in foreign lands. Recently, I met another CCK poster child when he came knocking on my friend's door, new in town, looking for a place to rent. His name is Nico. He was born in America, and, but grew up his entire life in Santiago, Chile, and attended the same international school. Knowing the struggles that my students go through, I asked him, well, wasn't that hard, having to say goodbye to so many friends? And he answered with a wry smile, and he said, yes, it was sad, but now I have places to stay everywhere around the world. Nico and thousands like him are why I work with students and schools to support cross-cultural children. In a century that's rife with division, isolationism, nationalism, pulling against the tide of globalization, we need natural bridge builders. We need folks who have lots of practice 
in creating connections across cultures. I believe in the power of positivity that CCKs can bring into the world. Whether they've grown up like Kristen and internationally mobile, or like Nico, staying in one place. I want cross-cultural children like my own to celebrate their childhood, to identify it, to label it, and to embrace it in a way that my father and I did not learn until much later in life. Because then, they can go out into the world and they can say, here is my story, now let me hear yours. Thank you. <laughs>